This video is about adding and subtracting rational numbers, specifically fractions, and you'll notice it says part two because we are going to be looking at now fractions that have different denominators. So when we have different denominators, in order to add different denominator fractions, we need to find the least common denominator. And in order to do that, we need to know our multiples because we want to find the least common multiple so that we do the least amount of work. It's kind of funny how that works out because there's quite a few multiples, but the least common multiple will help us to get to the answer quicker and to work with smaller numbers. The smaller numbers we work with, the easier it is for us to do and will allow us to make less mistakes. After that, we're going to use a fraction of 1 to create an equivalent fraction. What that means is we're going to take a fraction like 1 half and we might change it to 2 fourths or 4 eighths or 3 sixths, depending on the situation. The way, and those are all equivalent. And so the way we're going to work with that is to use a fraction of 1 to multiply the fraction by so that we can get like denominators. Because if the denominators are alike, if those fractions are cut into the same size pieces, then we can add and subtract them. We cannot combine fractions that are not in the same size. They are not measured the same way. So we need to get them to be equivalent in that respect. And then we would add or subtract the numerators. Then we would put the result over that common denominator. So let's take a look at how this works with two positive fractions, 1 ninth plus 2 thirds. So in looking for the least common denominator, we have to look at the multiple. So here I have a denominator of 9 and a denominator of 3. So first let's do the multiples of 3. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, and I can keep going. The same is true for 9. I have 9, 18, 27, and I'm going to stop there. We can see there are common multiples. They both have multiples of 18, but they also have multiples of 9. These are what we call common multiples, and there'll be more as we go along. But we want the least common denominator, the least multiple, which would be 9. Because if I only take the least one, as you look over here, that means I only need to change one fraction. If I took the multiple of 18, which is a common multiple, although it's not the least common multiple, I would have to change both fractions. So if I'm only changing one fraction, it's a lot easier and I would probably make less mistakes. So let's take this 1 ninth plus 2 thirds, and we decided that we're going to have a common denominator of 9. So I'm going to bring that down here, our common denominator of 9. Now this first one's 1 over 9, so we're going to keep it. But we need to change 2 thirds to have a denominator of 9. So what we're going to do in order to create that equivalent expression is we're going to use something called a fraction of 1. So I know that 3 times 3 will give me 9, so I'm really going to multiply 2 thirds by 3 over 3. We know any number divided by itself equals 1, and by multiplying something by 1, it does not change its value, but it does change it into more equivalent pieces that I might be able to use to combine, such as with like denominators and fractions. So when I do that, I see 3 times 3 is 9 in our denominator, and 2 times 3 is 6 in our numerator. So now we're at this point where our denominators are the same, so we're going to keep that 9, and we see that our numerators are 1 plus 6. Well, we would take that 1 plus 6, 1 plus 6, as we saw in the earlier video, and we'd say 1 plus 6 is 7, and then we'd be done. So 1 ninth plus 2 thirds equals 7 ninths. So we're going to use this process of finding a least common denominator by doing multiples, finding the least common multiple, and only changing those fractions by a fraction of 1 to combine so that we can get a solution to the problem. So let's move forward a little bit. Let's do another addition one. Here we have negative 1 tenth plus 2 fifths. If I did the multiples of 5 and the multiples of 10, I would find that the least common denominator would be 10. So with that in mind, I'm going to rewrite my statement here. So negative 1 tenth, I'm going to keep that, but I want my second fraction to have a denominator of 10. That means I'm going to have to multiply it by a fraction of 1. Do that. And so 
that would be 2 over 2 because 2 over 2 equals 1. So I can enlarge this fraction a little bit. So I'm going to have 2 times 2, which is 4. So 2 fifths and 4 tenths are equivalent fractions. Now that I have the same denominator, I am just going to equal this out with the same denominator of 10. And then I'm going to get my numerator, which is negative 1 plus 4. I have more positives than I have negatives, so this equals positive 3. And all I would do is put a positive 3 in the numerator, and I'm finished. So this idea of finding least common denominator and then using that fraction of 1 takes us back to where it's easier with the same denominators. So what happens when it's subtraction? Well, it's basically the same thing. We're just adding a step, and that's that step in the green box there. We're going to change our subtraction problem to an addition problem. What we're going to do is change the subtraction to addition, but in order to do that, we need to change the second fraction to be the additive inverse. If we take the additive inverse of the second fraction, then we can do subtraction. So we're going to practice that a little bit, that and what we're doing with different denominators and with integers, or I should say with positive and negative numbers. So let's take a look here at example number three. I have 1 8 minus 5 6. So the first step is we've got to change it to an addition problem. So I'm going to keep the 1 8. I'm going to change the subtraction to addition. And instead of positive 5 6, it's going to be negative 5 6. So here we have now an addition problem. I need to look for the least common denominator. So when I do multiples of 6, 6, 12, 18, 24, I think I just ran into it, and an 8, which would be 8, 16, 24, we can see now that least common multiple, or what we'll use for the denominator to be 24. So we're going to rewrite this statement with 24 as the denominator. And I need that negative sign with me. I don't want to lose it because that is a negative fraction, that second one. So I'm going to think about what fraction will I multiply 1 over 8 by to get it to be in terms of 24s. Well, I know 8 times 3 is 24, so that fraction of 1 is going to be 3 over 3. The same is true for negative 5, 6. I've got to think about what's that fraction of 1 going to be. And 6 times 4 is 24, so it's going to be 4 over 4. Now I'm going to simplify down here underneath it. So 3 times 1 in the numerator is 3. Negative 5 times 4 is negative 20. So now we have like denominators. I'm going to keep that denominator of 24. And I need to think about what is 3 plus a negative 20. I have more negatives than I have positives. So I have 17 more negatives. So my answer then becomes negative 17 over 24. Here's another example. We're going to change 5 twelfths minus negative fourth. We need to rewrite it as an addition problem. So 5 twelfths, the subtraction, we're going to change it to an addition problem. And the opposite of negative 1 fourth, or the additive inverse of negative 1 fourth, is positive 1 fourth. We're going to look for that least common denominator or least common multiple with 4 and 12. And you can see probably that it's 12. This first one doesn't need to be changed, but we do need to multiply by a fraction of 1 over on this second fraction. So we need to multiply by 3 over 3. We're going to simplify down below. We're going to keep that 5 twelfths. We're adding, and this denominator will be 12 as well. And we can see 1 times 3 in the numerator is 3. All I need to do is keep that denominator of 12. I see 5 plus 3, which happens to be 8. Now, most of us would stop right there, but hopefully you realize that 8 twelfths needs to be simplified because they're both even numbers. Think about what might be the largest even number that you can think of that will go into both of these numbers. We know 2 will, but 4 will as well. So I can use, again, that fraction of 1 to make an equivalent fraction of 8 twelfths. We can simplify it a little bit. 8 divided by 4 is 2. And 12 divided by 4 is 3. So our final answer for this problem, once we simplify, is 2 thirds. Here we have an example when we have mixed numbers. And I'm going to use this. You might have watched one of my videos and referred to method 1 and method 2. I'm going to stick with method 2 on this where I'm going to treat things separately. But the first thing I need to do is change the subtraction problem into an addition problem. So. 
negative 5 and 1 eighth is going to stay. This subtraction sign is going to become an addition sign. This is positive 3 and 3 sixteenths. Now I have negative 3 and 3 sixteenths. When I think about my least common denominator or my least common multiple, hopefully we can see it's 16. So what I need to do then is rewrite this so that I have 16 in the denominator on this first one. The second one is good as the way it is, 3 and 3 sixteenths. So I'm going to multiply this 1 over 8 by a fraction of 1, that is 2 over 2. And I can see 1 times 2 will give me 2, and 8 times 2 is 16. So that's my 5 and 2 sixteenths. So now we're going to work on this a little separately. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep these numbers, these whole numbers, and I'm going to add them separately. So when I add negative 5 and negative 3 together, when I add those two numbers together, I'm going to get negative 8. So then I'm going to add these other ones. So let me go to these other, these fractions. I'm going to color them in green. I have 2 sixteenths and I have negative 3 sixteenths. Remember that negative still goes out here. So basically what I'm looking at is 2 plus a negative 3. Negative 2 plus a negative 3. I need that negative sign out there as well on that negative 2. You see it out here too? It's going to go here. So negative 2 plus negative 3, we see that that's going to give me negative 5. So now I'm going to add negative 5 sixteenths with that. If I add a negative 8 and a negative 5, 5 sixteenths, I get together negative 8 and 5 sixteenths. So hopefully you see how that comes together a little bit. Let's take a look at a couple more and then we'll be done. So here we have negative one and one, excuse me, negative one third minus negative two fifths. So what I need to do is I need to change this subtraction sign to an addition sign. So I have negative one third adding instead of negative two fifths, the additive inverse is positive two fifths. And I need now to find a least common denominator. The least common denominator for this problem happens to be 15. Now, in order to get 15, I would have to multiply this 1 third by 5 over 5. I should say negative 1 third. And this 2 fifths, I would have to multiply by a fraction of 1, that is 3 over 3. By doing that, we get the common denominator of 15. Over on the left here, I have 5 times negative 1, which is negative 5, and 2 times 3 on the right, which is 6. Using the common denominator of 15. I have a numerator of negative 5 plus 6. Hopefully everybody can see that. Here's negative 5 plus 6. And we see that we have more positives than we have negatives. So we, our answer would be 1. So then we'd have 1 15th. I have one more to show you. Again, a mixed number situation. We have 1 and 1 fourth minus 2 and 3 tenths. So we're going to change it to an addition problem. So it becomes 1 and 1 fourth. Change the subtraction to addition. And then we're going to subtract 2 and 3 tenths, or excuse me, negative 2 and 3 tenths from a positive 2 and 3 tenths. Okay, we need a least common denominator or least common multiple. For this one, it's going to be 20. So I'm going to set off to the side my 1 and negative 2. I know that 1 and negative 2 will combine together to give me negative 1. And I'm going to fix this 1 fourth plus negative 3 tenths with that common denominator of 20. So that means this one on the left here, this 1 fourth, we're going to have to multiply by 5 over 5 to get that denominator of 20. And over here on the 3 tenths, we're going to multiply by 2 divided by 2. What that does for me is now I have 5 twentieths plus negative 6 twentieths. When I add those together, when I add a positive 5 with a negative 6, together when I combine that, I'm going to get negative 1 twentieth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two numbers. I'm going to take this negative 1 here, and I'm going to take this negative 1 twentieth, and I'm going to add them together to get my final result. So my final result for here will be negative 1 and 1 20th. Hopefully 
these examples help to explain what to do when you have different denominators and you're working with rational fractions numbers.